A little puppy snuggled up to his sister in the box it was very cold, but he didn't yet know that his sister no longer cared. The puppy didn't know that the person who had torn them from their mother a few hours ago and put them in the box had dumped the babies on the highway in some godforsaken place. The person hadn't even given a thought to their fate he was little concerned whether they were found alive or not. His favorite dog, an alibi of pure breeds, had given birth to these two pups a couple of months ago. She had run away from home, joined a pack of stray dogs, and roamed the area, breathing in the intoxicating air of freedom until she was caught by the owner in due time. She gave birth to two puppies. When the puppies grew a bit, the owner carelessly put them in a box and drove them to the nearest town center, which drearily stretched along the highway. Why he didn't drown them immediately, dooming them to a martyr death, was known only to God. But then some higher powers intervened, giving the little creature a chance for salvation. Janitor Motvi gloomily shuffled from the kiosk home a bottle peaked from his right pocket. Today was cold he was chilled to the bone and wanted to warm up quickly. And then, a box appeared in his path. Motvi kicked it mechanically, and from there came some sort of squeak. Oh, what a little lump, Motvi turned the puppy over in his hands. I'll give it to my wife it's her birthday today, and I don't have a gift. They argued for a long time in the smoke-filled kitchen over a bottle of vodka about what to name the puppy. Matvi suggested the ordinary Sharik or Babak, while his wife insisted on a beautiful, foreign name, Mason. Perhaps she was influenced by Santa Barbara. Well, it's your birthday today, said Matvi. Let's have it your way. So the puppy became Mason, although it didn't bring him happiness. His life was far from sweet, unlike that of foreign dogs. It was as if someone was testing his resilience by sending new trials his way. Motvi lived in an old, drafty barrack near the highway, a house that had been inherited and stood on the very outskirts of their small, backwater town. Thus, their drunken squabbles with his wife bothered and no one there were no neighbors close by. Mason was often punished for puddles while he was a puppy, for damaged furniture and shoes, and sometimes Motvi would just kick him in the stomach because Mason got in his way. The mistress also didn't like the puppy and never protected him from her drunken husband. From a little fluffy creature, he turned into a clumsy teenager, and then a tall but sturdy dog. His fur was of an utterly incredible color, like the material of flannel, white with some tender pink shade. In the evenings, Mason looked at the lit windows of houses and wondered. He couldn't understand why he was born and lived on this earth if he was needed by no one. He dreamed of having his own warm home and a kind owner. He would become a faithful friend to him. They could walk in the park for a long time, and then, returning from the street, have dinner with warm porridge and pieces of meat. Mason thought so, lying on the cold floor of an unheated stove and an empty bowl. When there was utterly no hope due to the drunken binges of the owners, he went to the highway and sat there for a long time, peering into the passing cars. It seemed to him that any moment a car would stop, and kind hands would take him away from here, home. Home was such a warm and cozy word. Unexpectedly for the young dog, the house became quiet. The mistress stopped drinking, and Matvi sat alone in the kitchen for a long time, with a glass. There was no one to quarrel with now, and, reaching the bottom of the bottle, he went to sleep. Mason couldn't understand what was happening at first, but the growing belly of the mistress put everything in its place. For several months, peace and quiet settled in the house, and Mason even thought that his most cherished dreams were coming true. But the dog's happiness didn't last long. A baby wrapped in a flannel blanket was brought into the house with the mistress. The pink bundle smelled delicious Mason even wanted to lick it. He immediately loved the little human. But why did they need a child? What would they do with him? Anxiety settled in the dog's soul. And soon, his fears were justified. 
the mistress struggled with the role of a mother. All at once, she was overwhelmed by feeding on schedule, sleepless nights, and dirty diapers. A child wasn't like a puppy that could be pushed aside and ignored. And after a couple of months, Matvi and his wife were often sitting at the bottle in the smoke-filled kitchen again, but now two living beings, unwanted by anyone, suffered in the house, left without maternal love. Mason felt sorry for the baby. On long, cold, lonely evenings and nights, he would climb into the baby's crib and warm the child with his body, falling asleep next to him. That evening, after a drunken argument, the grieving parents went to the far room to rest. They fell asleep, locked in the bedroom, ignoring the insistent cries of the child, tightly wrapped in a blanket. He was hungry, but it didn't matter to the mother she fell asleep near the TV, and Matvi collapsed in a chair and passed out, a lit cigarette smoldering in his hand. The acrid smoke began to spread quietly, filling the space of the master bedroom. Something kept Mason awake and increasingly uneasy. The genes inherited from countless generations of stray dogs were pounding in his head, run, you need to run away from here. He stood up and walked to the door as usual, it was not locked. I'll leave forever and never return to this cursed house and this cursed life, the dog decided once and for all. But what about the baby? No, he couldn't leave the baby in this place. It was the only creature on earth that Mason loved. So, they would leave together. At that moment, the child lying in his room in the crib stirred anxiously in his sleep and whimpered. The parents, as always, paid no attention to his crying. Mason pulled the child out of the crib with his teeth, carefully took the bundle, and dragged the baby to the door, carrying his most precious cargo in his mouth. He headed towards the highway only there could he find salvation for himself and the child. At least, that's what he thought. Dasha was returning to the city from her parents, whom she visited once a month. A couple more populated areas, and she would be home, where her beloved husband was waiting. Suddenly, ahead in the headlights, she saw something white on the side of the road, right on the road. It seemed to her that something was lying there. She slowed down and stopped the car. Dasha peered into the darkness and couldn't believe her eyes. Indeed, about 20 meters ahead, there really was a small bundle resembling a pile of tightly wrapped sheets, and next to it sat a huge, trembling from cold and fear, dog. Oh my god, Dasha muttered, and running closer, she fell to her knees right on the ground. She looked into what was a bundle of sheets. She saw a little wrinkled face of a baby trying to cry. Oh my god, it's an infant, the girl whispered. How did he end up here? But such twists of fate were not new to her the girl worked in juvenile services and had seen all sorts of things. She grabbed the baby in her arms and rushed to the car. She needed to get to the city as quickly as possible to help the baby. Dasha had driven a few hundred meters when she suddenly remembered the dog. The dog, she thought. Slowly, the dog walked along the roadside towards the city, away from his former life. Suddenly, the car with the baby reversed and stopped next to Mason. The door flung open. The dog, at first, didn't even realize he was being invited to sit in the back seat. Dasha got out of the car, approached Mason, and her kind, warm hands gently patted him on the ear. Come on, let's go home quickly, she said. Mason heard that cherished word. Home. How long he had dreamed of hearing it. The car sped along the highway, faster and faster. Mason pressed his body against the sleeping baby and fell asleep to the quiet rustling of the wheels. Everything was as in his dreams. He dreamed of a home, the kind eyes of a girl, warm hands, sparkling eyes, and a bowl of warm porridge with meat. He and the baby were going home, and Dasha thought about how she would definitely adopt this foundling. 
It wasn't for nothing that he had met her on the road. Did you like the story? Like and subscribe to the channel. There's still a lot of interesting things ahead. All the best.